um, which is titled Andrew Huberman's Mechanism of Control, The Private and Public Seductions of the World's Biggest Pop Neuro Neuroscientist. And essentially, from what I've been able to gather online, he just is a bit of a player. And that's why this person decided to put this article, this kind of, you know, hit piece in order to kind of bring light to it. So, first of all, I don't really know why it's anyone's business, really, unless he's married or something. Maybe that's when it becomes a bit shitty. But even then, it still isn't probably enough reason to have somebody get cancelled. Um, and then secondly, it's like, so what? That's what I come away thinking of it, just off the top of my head. So fucking what? But I'm going to read a bit of this article and see if there's anything else that maybe some people online have kind of missed to kind of give us an idea on what's really going on here because it feels a bit strange that this would require such a big, you know, article in such a prestigious magazine, newspaper, blah, 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 and be over 55 minutes long, I think, as a podcast. Let's actually skip around and see if we can find some bits on here that might give us a reason to, you know, understand why everyone's got their knickers in a twist of a Huberman, you know, laying down some dick in whatever city he's in. By then, he had a partner, Sarah, which is not her real name. Sarah was someone who would talk to anyone about anything. She was dewy, strong, and in her mid forties. Though she looked the, okay, I'm I'm thankful. Thank God, these women are of age. Thank God, thank God they're of age. I thought he was going to be into some mad crystalia shit. Thank God. Okay, she was dewy, strong, and in her mid forties. And though she looked a decade younger, with small kids from a previous relationship. Um, she had old friends who adored her and no trouble making new ones she came across as scattered in the way that she was jumped readily from topic to topic in conversations like me adhd gang holler um losing the thread before returning to it but she was in fact extremely organized she was a woman who kept track of things she was an entrepreneur who would organize meetings a skill she would need later for reasons she would not possibly have predicted <laughs> yo andrew Huberman, andrew huberman was out here Huberman was out here fucking girls on the main Huberman Lab Instagram account and getting his girlfriend to organize meetings for other girlfriends, but they were not aware they were organizing cheeky links for other cheeky links. This is what it sounded like. When I asked her a question in her home recently, she said the answer would be on the old phone. She stood up, left for only a moment, and returned with the box labeled old phones. <laughs> Andrew Huberman, oh fucking top boy. So the relationship with Andrew <coughs> began in February 2018 in the Bay Area where they both lived. She messaged he messaged her on Instagram. Oh, he reached out first. Hmm. Hello. He messaged her on Instagram and said he owned a home in it was a place called Piedmont. Piedmont, a wealthy city separate from Oakland. That turned not to be precisely true. He lived in Piedmont Avenue which was in Oakland. He was courtly and a bit formal as he would later be on the podcast. In July in her garden, Sarah says she asked to clarify the depth of the relationship. They decided, she says, to be exclusive. So he hooked up with some random on Instagram and that was his first girlfriend, Sarah. Big up, Sarah. Both had devoted lives to healthy living, exercise, good food, good information. They cared immoderately about what went into their bodies. Andrew Wood could command a room and clearly took pleasure in doing so. He was busy and handsome, healthy, extremely ambitious. He gave impression of working on himself throughout their relationship. He would talk about repair and healthy emerging. He was devoted to his bull staff, his, sorry, his bull mastiff, Costello, whom he worried over constantly. Was Costello comfortable, sleeping properly? Andrew liked to dote on the dog, he, she says, and he liked to be doted on by Sarah. <laughs> is that gonna be a new red flag for women out there a guy that's really into his dog is that gonna be a new red flag for these fucking psycho astrology possessed women out there that are gonna be like a new red flag new fear unlocked men who love their dogs <laughs> i was never sitting the quote here i was never sitting around him she says she cooked for him felt glad when she he relished um, that she had made and Sarah was willing to be the Sarah was wow okay this is a big line Sarah was willing to have unprotected sex because she believed that they were monogamous yo Andrew you've been out here spreading STDs eh? I thought you couldn't get an STD if you take AG1 though I thought AG1 prevents STDs <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Thanksgiving 2018 Sarah planned to introduce Andrew to her parents and close friends 
She was cooking. Andrew texted repeatedly to say he would be late. Then later, according to a friend, he was just, oh, yeah, I'll be there. Oh, I'm going to be running hours late. Then late, of course, all of these things were planned around his arrival. And he just kept going, oh, I'm going to be late. Then it's at the end of the night and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry this and this happened. Human disappearing was something of a pattern. So your boyfriend just disappears. That's that's a more of a red flag than him loving his dog, to be fair. Your boyfriend just not being there when you need them is probably a bigger red flag than him loving his dog, I would assume. I wouldn't know anything, but I would assume. Human disappearing was something of a pattern. Friends, girlfriends and colleagues describe him as hard to reach. Hey, he kind of sounds like me. Um, the list of reasons for not showing up included the book, time stamping the podcast. <laughs> Yo, I need to start doing this, man. I need to start doing this. Oh, I'm reading too much, babe. I've got I've got to timestamp these podcasts. You know what I mean, I've got to add <laughs> I've got to add descriptions. I've got to make flyers, man. Artwork, you know what I mean? Yo, you can get away with some shit if you really believe in your shit. The list of reasons for not showing up included the book, timestamp the podcast, Costello the dog, wildfires, and meetings tunnels. And a meetings tunnel. What's a meetings tunnel? He's flaky and doesn't respond to things, says his friend Brian McKenzie. Oh, Brian McKenzie, the fucking um, CrossFit running dude. Look at him, man. He's, look, what, why is he lending his... Come on. A healthy influencer who has collaborated with him in a breathing protocols. And if you can't handle that, Andrew definitely is not somebody you want to be close to. He is in some ways... He in some ways disappeared, says David Spiegel, the Stanford psychiatrist who calls Andrew prodigiously smart and intensely engaging. I mean, I recently got a really nice email from him, which I was touched by. I really was. So basically, he sounds a lot like me. When he's there, he's there. When he's not, he's not. In 2018, before he was famous, Huberman invited a Colorado-based investigative journalist and anthropologist, Scott Carney, to his home in Oakland for a few days. Or two, what, did he also fuck this guy? Is he bi? What's happening here? What are they mentioning this guy for? The two would go camping and discuss their mutual interest in actionable science. He had been Huberman, a fan of Carney's book, What Doesn't Kill Us, who initially reached out. Huberman confirmed Carney's list of camping gear, sleeping bag, bug spray and boots. Yo, did, did Huberman fuck this dude? When Carney got there, the two didn't go camping. Huberman simply disappeared for most of the day and a half while Carney stayed home with Costello. He parted around Huberman's place, buying a juice, walking through the neighbourhood, waiting for him to return. Now, that is weird, isn't it? I don't want to lie, that is weird. A guy invites you around to his house. You're meant to go camping. You don't really know him too well. Then he just leaves you alone in his home. And then you just do what? Keep yourself occupied while you wait for him to come and he never actually comes back. It was extremely weird, says Carney. Huberman texted from elsewhere saying he was busy working on a grant. A spokeswoman, a spokesperson for Huberman says he clearly communicated with Carney that he went to work. Eventually, instead of camping, the two went on short hikes. Even when physically present, Huberman can be hard to track. I don't have total fidelity to who Andrew is, says a friend Patrick Dossett. There's always a little unknown there. He describes Andrew as an amazing thought pattern and almost totally recall of such memory that one feels a need to watch what one says. A stray comment could surface three years later. And yet after other times, you're like, all right, I'm saying words and he's nodding or he's responding, but I can tell something I said sent him down a path and he's continuing to have that inner dialogue about it. Now, to be fair, when th in this particular section, I think they're being a bit harsh. You don't, you don't get to be, you know, Andrew Huberman level smart without being a little bit socially aloof and distant. You don't get to do that. You don't get to, you know, invent all these cool protocols and give people all this amazing advice if you're also super present, active in people's lives, attending birthdays, you know, doting over them and shit. It doesn't happen that way. You have to kind of be a little bit of a psycho, a little bit of a spectrum, a little bit, in, you know, self-absorbed. Like, this sounds completely normal to me. If anything, he sounds, you know what, he reminds me of a little bit. Andrew Huberman reminds me a lot of um, Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is similar into what I'm reading here. Anyway, it says here, Andrew Huberman declined to be interviewed for the story. Through spokesman, Abby said he did not become exclusive with Sarah until 2021 and that he was not doted on and that tasks between him and Sarah were shared. 
In full 2020, Huberman sold his home in Oakland and rented one in Topanga, a wooded canyon enclave contiguous um, with um, Los Angeles. When he came back to Stanford, he stayed with Sarah. And when he was in Topanga, Sarah was often with him. One day four, it was, she says, typically because Andrew would fixate on her past, the men that she'd been with before him, the two children they had with another man, or that she had with another man. I experienced his rage, Sarah. Oh, honestly, these women too, like, he, he was a shitty boyfriend. He wasn't a good stepdad. That's not a crime. Why are you telling the paper this? Come on, Sarah, man. Have some respect for yourself as well. This is kind of embarrassing. I experienced his rage as two or three days of yelling in a row. He was yelling at me. When he was in a state, he would go on until 11. Yo, it's a standard relationship shit. And sometimes he would start again at 2 or 3 in the morning. Ugh, whatever, man. Relationships struck Sarah's friends as co as odd. At one point, yeah, friends are always hating on relationships, so I don't give a fuck about them. Another friend found him stressful to be around. I tried to be open-minded, she said, about a relationship. I don't want to be the most negative. Yeah, well, you're being negative. Or non-supportive friend just because of my personal observation and disgust. Wow. I don't want to be negative, but I have personal observations and disgust. <laughs> i love when people say that i don't mean to be rude but you're a fucking cunt you know i love that i love the i love the contrast of those two things or the words followed by each other right um it continues he's like oh my dog needs his blanket this way and i'm like your dog is just lying there super cozy why are you being weird about the blanket okay okay that's fair Sarah was not the only person who experienced the extent of Andrew's anger. In 2019, Carney sent Huberman materials from his then forthcoming book, The Wedge, in which Huberman appears. Um, he asked Huberman to confirm the parts in which he was mentioned. For months, Huberman did not respond. Carney sent a follow-up email. If Huberman did not respond, he would assume everything was accurate. In 2020, after months of saying he was too busy to read the materials, Huberman called him and Carney came at him in a rage. I've never had a source I thought that was friendly go banana, said Carney. Screaming, Huberman threatened to sue and accused Carney of violating Navy Obspec. Navy Okay, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he does he sounds he sounds intense. He sounds like a bit of a wally, but again, I'm not surprised. He had become by then one of the most perplexing relationships of Carney's life. Um that year Carney agreed to Huberman's invitation to swim with sharks. So he has he has ability to like annoy people freak them out get under their skin but they're still captivated by his intellect right i'm assuming and they still go back in again they still bite take another bite of the apple that year carney invite human um to invitation to swim with sharks on the island off of mexico first carney would have to spend a month of his summer getting certified in denver he then at considerable expense human had cancelled the trip the day oh my god Huberman then cancelled the trip a day before they were set to leave. I think Huberman likes to build up people's expectation. And then he actually enjoys the opportunity to pull the rug. Oh, he sounds so much like me. This sounds horrible, man. This sounds kind of a... This is making me sound like an abuser as well. Because I sometimes do this. Fuck. This ain't good. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of having an opportunity to look into the mirror here. Jesus. In January 2021, Huberman launched his own podcast. His reputation would be directly tied to his role in teaching as a scientist. Um, I remember feeling quite lonely and making some efforts to repair that Huberman would say on the episode of 2024. Loneliness, his interviewer said, is a need state. In 2021, the country was in a later stage of need state, bored, alone, powerless. Huberman offered not only hours of educative listening, but a plan to structure your day, a plan for waking, for eating, for exercise, for sleep. At a time when life was, had shifted to screens, um, he brought people back to their uh, corporal selves. Uh, he advised on psychological sigh, two short breaths in and out, one and out to reduce stress. He pulled countless people from their laptops and put them in a rhythm with the sun. Thank you for all you do to better humanity. Read comments on YouTube. You may have just saved my life, man. If Andrew Moon was science teacher for everyone in the world, no one would have missed even a single class. That's true, to be fair, but I I'm surprised. He I don't know why I heard. I feel like I heard about him before the pandemic. 
but maybe he did blow up during the pandemic. That this does make a lot of sense because I did remember hearing his name often during the pandemic, especially on other podcasts as well. So that was probably a time when things went fucking bananas for him. So big up Huberman for that one. Asked by Time last year for a definition of fun, Huberman says, "I learn and like to exercise." Among his most famous episodes is one which he declares moderate drinking to be decidedly unhealthy. As Mackenzie puts it, "I don't think anyone or anything, including prohibition, has ever made more people think about alcohol than Andrew Huberman." very good point very good point brian mckenzie while he claims repeatedly that he doesn't want to demonize alcohol he fails to mask his obvious disapproval for anyone who consumes alcohol in any quantity he follows a time restricted eating schedule he discusses constraint even in joy um, because a dopamine spike is invariably followed by a drop uh, below baseline he explains how even a small pleasure like a cup of coffee before every workout reduces the capacity to release dopamine Huberman frequently refers to the importance of social contact and peace commitment. In 2021, Sarah says that she read Huberman's journal and discovered a reference for cheating. She says, she was, she says, gutted. I hear you are saying you are angry and hurt. He texts her the same day. I'll hear you as much as long as you need it for us. Andrew and Sarah wanted children together. Optimizers sometimes prefer not to conceive naturally. One can exert more control when procreation involves a lab. <laughs> <laughs> yo human went to control her birth yo sarah began the first of several rounds of ivf a spokesman who been denies that he and sarah decided to have children together clarifying that they decided to create embryos by ivf in 2021 she tested positive for a high form of hpv one of the various linked to cervo cervo sorry cervical cancer i had never tested positive Oh no, is she accusing Andrew of giving a, a, a fucking HPV? And they've been tested regularly for 10 years. According to CDC, there's a currently no approved test for HPV in men. When she brought it up, she says he told her you could have contacted HPV for many things. I'd been remiss if I didn't ask about truth telling and deception, Andrew told eventually um psychologist david boss on november 2021 episode of human lab in which he says humans select keep and romantic partners in short and long term they were talking about regularities um across cultures and mates preferences could you tell us andrew says about how men and women leverage deception <laughs> this guy talks very honestly in these podcasts about everything that he actually does in real life i love this andrew guy deception versus truth telling and communicating some of the things around mate selection effective tactics for men said a gravel voice 68 year old bus are often displaying cues to long-term interest men tend to exaggerate the depths of their feelings for a woman aka lie <laughs> lie for the niash um let's talk about infidelity in committed relationships says andrew i'm guessing it does happen men who have affairs tend to have affairs with a large number of affair partners and so which then by definition can't be long-lasting you can't, said David Bus Riley. You have the long term affairs with six different partners. Yeah, said Andrew. Unless he's um and here's Andrew looks into the distance, juggling multiple uh phone accounts or something of that sort. Right, right, right. And some men try to do that, but I think it could be very taxing. So Huberman was basically telling on himself on this pod on this pod. By 2022, um, Andrew was legitimately famous. Typically, headlines will read, I tried to stand for press's top productivity routine. Google CEO uses non-sleep, deep, relax. And then in June 2022, they fully combined live. Sarah relocated their family to Malibu to be with him. According to Sarah, Andrew's rage intensified with cohabitation. He fixated on her decision to have children with another man. Um, she says that he told her that being with her was like bobbing for apples with feces what he said being with her was like bobbing for apples and feces yo these white people insults to women are crazy imagine saying that to a girl it's like bobbing for apples and feces Jeez. the pattern of your 11 years while rooted in subconscious drivers he told her in december 2021 creates a nearly impossible set of hurdles for us you have to change what the fuck does that even mean the pattern of your 11 years while rooted in some conscious drivers creates a nearly impossible set of hurdles for us. You have to change. He's talking to her like she's a podcast guest. Sarah was in fact changing. She felt herself getting smaller, constantly appeasing. She apologized again and again and again. I've been selfish, childish, confused. As a result, I need your protection. A spokesman said that he was very much in control of his emotions. 
Um, the first round of IVF did not produce healthy embryos. In the spring of 2022, enraged again about her past, Andrew asked Sarah to explain in detail what he called her, um, what he called her, her bad choices, most specifically having a second child. She wrote it out and it read it out aloud to him. A spokesperson for Ibuman denies this incident and says he did not regard her as having a second child as a bad choice. I think it's important to recognize that we have a model of someone here, a model of somebody who should conduct themselves. And if they do something that is out of sync, maybe it's on us, our model is just off. Human speciality lies in narrow field, visual system wiring. How comfortable one feels with science program propagated on human lab depends entirely on how much leeway one is willing to give a man who expounds on multiple hours a week on subjects. His distractors note that human exfoliates, ex, sorry, extrapolates widely from limited animal studies and posts certainty um, where there were ambiguity. There are quack guests, but these are greatly outnumbered by profound, complex, patient, and often moving descriptions of biological process. Human lab is a precise on the image of working scientists. Let's continue here. It's a postdoc working on her own funding alone in the lab. It's a researcher in Stanford. The lab says the researcher was scaling down on COVID. Duh, duh, duh. I want to see some of the other cheating stuff here. On every episode of the Zero Cost podcast, Huberman gives a lengthy endorsement of the powder formerly known as Athletic Greens as AG1. It's one of the things to hear Athletic Greens promoted by Joe Rogan. It's perhaps another to hear somebody who sells himself as Stanford University scientist just back from lab proclaim that this $79 a month powder covers all your foundational nutritional needs. In an industry not noted for its integrity, AG1 is, according to the writer and professional debunker, Derek Berris, one of the most egregious players in the game. Here, we have a powder that contains, according to its own marketing, 75% active ingredients, far more than a typical supplement, which would seem a selling point for more of the inconvenience of the masses. Um, as performance nutritionist Adam McDonald points out, the vast number of ingredients in indicates that each ingredient which may or may not promote good health in a certain dose is likely included in minuscule amounts. Ah, uh, so AG1 isn't actually legit. That's surprising to hear. Not. Though consumers are left to do the maths themselves, the company keeps many of the numbers proprietary. We can almost guarantee that literally every supplement or ingredient within these proprietary blend is underdosed, says Dr. McDonald. Um, he says that they don't appear to add up in anything the research has shown to be meaningful. And indeed, the problem with most of the pro probiotics is that they're typically not con um, concentrated enough to actually colonize. One learns from Dr. Lynn Norton in November 22 episode of the Human Lab. AG1 argues that probiotics are the effect of the same five the different ingredients. When Sarah was suspicious about Andrew's intentions or interaction with another woman, he had a particular way of talking about women in question. She says... He said the women were stalkers, alcoholics, compulsive liars. He told her that one woman tore her hair out with chunks of flesh attached to it. He told her a story about a woman who fabricated a story about a dead baby to entrap him. Most of the time, Sarah believed him. The women probably were crazy. He was a celebrity. He had to be careful. <laughs> Yo, know, he's moving mad, bro. He's moving mad. Don't worry, babe. That woman's crazy. Don't worry, babe. It was in August 2022 that Sarah noticed that she and Huberman could not go out without being thronged by people. On a camping trip in Washington State, the same month Sarah bought syringes and a cooler and with ice packs. Every day of the trip, she injected the drugs meant to stimulate fertility into her stomach. This was round four. Later that month, Sarah was grabbed um, Andrew's phone when he left in the bathroom, checked his texts and found conversations with someone we will call Eve. Some of them took during the camping trip and they had just taken. Your feelings matter, he told Eve on a day. I'm actually very much a caretaker. I'm back on the grid tomorrow and would love to see you this weekend. Oh, no. Cool having an affair. Andrew was apologetic. The landscape was incredibly hard, he said. I let the stress get to me. I defaulted to safety. And I use the sound the hardest feelings and I hear your insights. Sarah noticed how courteous he was with Eve. So many offers to process and work things through. Eve is, is firmly, sorry, is eternally beautifully actress. Huh? Isn't it, isn't it feral? Is that, how do you say that? Ephemerally, ephemerally, beautiful actress. The kind of woman for whom it is hard not to look away. Where Sarah exudes whims, um, winsome, chaotic energy, 
Eve is imme intimidatingly collected. Eve saw Andrew on Raya in 2020. Messaged him on Instagram. I wonder who e this Eve person is. I wonder if she's a famous actress or just like a working actress. They went on for a swim. So they went for a swim in Venice and he complimented her form. Imagine going swimming on as a first date. That's pretty intense, isn't it? A little bit. Half naked, water and shit. Hmm. You're definitely, he said, on the faster side of a distribution. He, she found him to be an extraordinary listener and she liked the way that he appeared to be interested in her internal life. He was busy all the time with his book and eventually the podcast, his dog, responsibilities in Stanford. So I wonder if some of the women got turned on by the fact that he was so intelligent and so busy. Had so much on. But then it also feels like he purposely had all that stuff on so that he could avoid commitment, right? And <laughs> staying in one place with these people. Oh, humans are fucking top boy. I'm willing to do the repair work on this, he said when she called him out on standing her up. This sucks, but don't deter my desire to commitment to see you. Establish clear lines of communication and trust. Despite his endless excuses for not showing up, he seemed to Eve to be serious about deepening their relationship, which lasted on and off for two years. Eve had impressions that she was not seeing. He was not seeing anybody else. She was willing to have unprotected sex. Yo, Huberman just busting down his woman raw. As their relationship intensified over the years, he talked often about the family he one day wanted. Our children would be amazing, he said. She asked for book recommendations and he suggested jokingly Huberman why we made babies. I'm the stage in life where I'm willing, truly want to have to build a family. That's a resounding theme for me. How to smash lives, he said in a voice memo. A foundational question. One time she heard him say on Rogan that he had a girlfriend. She texted him to ask about it and he responded immediately. He had a stalker, he said, and so his team had decided to invent a partner for the listening public. I later learned, Eve tells me with crash traumatic um, equanimity, that this was not true. Jesus. In December 2022, Eve noticed that Sarah was looking at her Instagram stories, not commenting or liking, just looking. Impulsively, Eve messaged her. Is there anything you'd rather ask me directly, she said. They set up a call. Fuck you, Andrew. She messaged him. Oh. That must happen quite often, isn't it, to men, I'd assume. Women have a feeling something's going on. They find the other woman. They don't know how to broach that first communication. Start checking their stories. And I'm assuming, you know, most women are probably into checking who's fucking checking their stories every day. I don't really post on Instagram, so I wouldn't really check too much that often. And if I do, I'm not going to be checking through who's liking my stuff. It's a bit weird, but I'm sure women do that. So that's probably a a very um, common thing that happens to a lot of dudes out there that are on the town, you know, going crazy and not staying at home. Jesus. Sarah moved out in August 2023, but says she remained in committed relationship with Andrew. Of course she did. Uh, a spokesman for Andrew Huberman says that they were never separated. They were separated, sorry. At Thanksgiving that year, she noticed that he was wiggly every time a cell phone came in to a table, trying to avoid, she suspected, being photographed. She says she did not leave him until... So <laughs> Andrew Huberman didn't want to be in any pictures in the back. Oh, what a legend. A queen to Sarah... <laughs> That should be a big red flag to girls, by the way. If the guy you're with doesn't want to take pictures. <laughs> According to Sarah, the relationship ended as it had started with a lie. He had been uh, at her place for a couple of days and he left for, to, for, to, for his place to prepare for a Zoom call. They planned for Christmas shopping the next day. Sarah showed up at his house and found him on the couch with another woman. She could see them together through the window. If you're going to be a cheater, she advised him, do not live in a glass house. Like a literal glass house. Okay, cool. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'm assuming most of it is what I've read there in the beginning. Andrew been out here cheating, doing what, you know, I guess a lot of dudes out there are doing when they're painting the town red. I guess the only issue for me in this regard is that outside of this being a nonsense article and not being needing to exist because it just seems like he's a shitty dude, but that's not a crime and it shouldn't be a cancelable thing. I think it's a complete waste of time and probably journalists should be wasting or should be spending their time, you know, 
trying to topple governments expose fucking fraud and you know whatever right give the voice to the voiceless but not be you know detailing the fucking sexual escapade of some you know one percenter elite fucking super educated white dude somewhere in america makes no fucking sense but if we're gonna do this one of the weird things about this is that why does he feel the need to have girlfriends if he's so intent on having so many women to kind of you know bounce off of because he clearly enjoys the fact that he doesn't need to be held down but he also likes a little bit of the security in the back of his mind because he's so busy you'd imagine he probably can't be in a normal quote-unquote committed relationship because he doesn't have the time to spend with the person if that's the case just do your thing in it do your thing live that life you know go and ride every day you know smash a couple of your listeners here and there but you don't need to like be in a committed relationship with them you don't need to give them you don't need to sell them dreams that's the only thing that is a little bit shitty about this he clearly goes out of his way to sell them dreams and it's not necessary if he doesn't want to do that which he clearly doesn't because every time it from what we've seen so far again we don't know these girls might be crazy but from the two accounts we've read so far every time it seems that the relationship is, needs to go to the next every time it seems that the logical next step is to be more committed and maybe try for kids or move in together he seems to kind of squirm away or run so clearly he has some level or some form of a commitment issue if that's the case just play the game and live live your life especially considering his fame you know a lot of women like the look of his face i'm sure guys like the look of his face also i don't really see the problem why he can't just like live that bachelor lifestyle maybe it doesn't go well for his image because that's the only thing i think would be an issue for human fans will be it's a bit of a it's a bit of a surprise considering how he kind of presents himself online which i guess is an issue for a lot of people myself concluded where because you are a certain way online with your content sometimes people can read a lot into like how what that means for you as a person out of your content like in real life and shit and i don't feel there's any way of avoiding that unfortunately because once you come into communication with somebody um they can only read into what you're what you're like in that communication and for better or worse but when you're in communication with people um you also give them the opportunity to kind of come into your life and sort of like you know rummage around and find out whatever they want to find out and sometimes they leave happy sometimes they leave very 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 unhappy the only way i guess to kind of avoid that is to kind of just keep yourself to yourself and kind of make it a bit of a one-way communication relationship type of thing which is a bit odd in itself anyway but that might be the only way to kind of make it happen to avoid anyone really being hurt and shit but again nonsense article it doesn't change my love and appreciation for the guy i still think his podcast is amazing i think it's a an amazing um part of the extended idw i think you're gonna call them or the rogan verse i don't know i don't really think i don't really i wouldn't really classify him as international dark web member but he's definitely one of the best things to come out of that kind of jre verse world um human optimization self-actualization type of world as well um he's definitely the natural evolution of like a tim ferris type of vibe a little bit more charismatic and shit a little bit more knowledgeable bloody blah, blah 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 but it just in general um big fan of his pod big fan of some of his stuff i see online and shit and he does obviously great guest appearances on stuff like lex freeman and whatever it may be so um you know nonsense article it's gonna it's gonna blow over it probably has already blown over especially if you've seen the recent video he posted on his twitter where he's kind of like talking about some new protocols and he, i think he names them it's something about it being six new protocol which is funny because it's the same number of people who allegedly are in this article that claimed that he cheated on them and shit so regardless um not big of an issue huberman likes to fuck women like to fuck him clearly but he also likes to sell them dreams absolutely hilarious ag1 selling you dreams when it comes to probiotics and huberman selling you dreams irl you gotta love it you got to fucking love it <laughs>